Hello world, hello friends. Some of you were very mad at me over on Instagram when I shared that I actually like Bard more than ChatGPT. Let me know which one you like more down below. I love hearing this debate and seeing everyone's point of view, but since many of you don't have access to Bard and have only seen the old bad Bard, I thought I would show you a demo of what it can do today and several things which I think it does better than ChatGPT. And I'm gonna try to be as unbiased as possible. I am a paying ChatGPT Plus user and I love ChatGPT, so don't get me wrong, but Bard is totally free and I'm very impressed with how much it's improved since a few months ago when it caused a hundred billion dollar loss in Alphabet shares. On May 10th, Google removed that waitlist and made BART available in over 180 countries. And if it's not available in your country, you can VPN because it's not available in mine, or you can watch this demo to get a little low down of what it can do and my thoughts about it. Let me know your thoughts below. Do you think that Bard's actually doing a good job? I think it's gonna get a lot better because now Google is devoting all of its resources towards AI and it's no longer following that safety agenda that they had, the do things right, don't do things fast. Motto is totally out the window and they're just going straight at AI. So I think Bard's gonna improve a lot in the next few months and it is gonna be better than ChatGPT. Not just the free version, but also ChatGPT4 or ChatGPT. GPT-5, whatever's out at that time. Let me know what you think below. I'm curious to know which horse you're rooting for in this AI race. And as always, I'd super appreciate a like, subscribe if you aren't already. So without further ado, here we go. So here's 10 reasons why I think I'm better than Chad GPT. Oh, is that a diss? Chad GPT. Okay, it is now time for a live demo. Let me show you around. So I just signed up for Bard. You can do this at bard.google.com. It's absolutely free. And I just got an email from them with all of the latest features so we can explore new features together. So the first one is export to Google Docs and Gmail. Love that feature. Use Bard with a workspace account. Read more comfortably in dim light. Honestly, they need a dark theme, obviously. And you can now collaborate in Japanese and Korean. So that's pretty cool. They're gradually expanding global access. And now you can speak Japanese, Korean, and English in over 180 countries. But if it's not available in your country, don't worry, you can VPN. It's not available in mine either. And I'm just VPNing here. I think you might have to have a VPN at the network level because I did try to use Surfshark and that did not work. So I think Google's a little too smart for that. But you can VPN if you really want to have access to it. Now let's look at the features together. So. First thing I love here is let's enter a prompt. So let's start with a really simple one just to show you its creativity. Tell me what Bard is in a song by Metallica. The word Bard does not appear in any Metallica song. However, it's often referred to a poet traditionally, one reciting epics. No, 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 no. It did not understand me. Okay, so it's logic and understanding is supposed to be really good, but maybe I had a really bad prompt. So. Garbage in, garbage out. We need to have a better prompt. So tell me what Google's Bard AI is in the tone of Metallica rock band. I mean, we have to make them semi bad because this should work for everyone. All right, see, now it understands it. Google's Bard AI is the new kind of beast. It can learn and think and create. It's a real piece. It can write poems and code and even translate. It's a powerful tool. It's a real breakthrough. Bard, Bard, it's the future. Bard, Bard. It's the truth, Bard Bard, it's the way, Bard Bard, it's the new. Yeah, I think that's honestly pretty good. But my favorite feature is, also that wasn't really saying, okay, don't judge me. My, my favorite feature is these drafts here. So you can click down here for view other drafts and we have draft one, that's what we just saw. But then we have the second draft, so totally different song. Oh, I don't like it as much. Bard Bard, it's a language model from Google AI. It's the best there is. It can do anything. It's so powerful. It's like a metal god. It's so cool. And yeah, this one's this one's really bad. Third draft, also not very good and very similar to the first draft. Okay, but for emails and things that require small revisions, it's really nice to have three different options to choose from. In ChatGPT's API, you can actually do that. I don't know why they didn't bring it to the front end and let people use different drafts from the UI. You can do that in the API, but anyway, I think that's a fantastic tool tap. Now my second favorite thing is here this export response button. So down here you can click on export response and you can export directly to docs. Just check this out. 
So open docs. Sorry, I'm not wait screen recording the whole thing, but this is it. Sure, here's a song about blah, blah, blah. And this is great because I copy paste everything to docs or Gmail. And you can also export to a draft in Gmail. I just don't like how it sets the subject as my prompt. I think that could have been then better. You guys could have come up with the title yourself. Like it's not better than as an other prompt to Bard API or whatever and made it a little better, but it's pretty good. Now for the real test, let's see how good it is with code. So let's ask it to write a bash script to automate um, organizing my documents. Let's see what it can come up with. All right, here's bash script to organize your docs. So create a list of all the files in the current directory, live through the files and move them to the appropriate directory. I don't know how it determines what is the appropriate directory, but okay, I like its code snippets, but I would have liked if it had color like ChatGPT. I think that's really useful. The fact that ChatGPT, you know, makes the code look like it would in your IDE. This is a very black and white, so they can improve the UI of it, but otherwise it's pretty good. All right, I'm just going to copy paste a whole bunch of code from a side project and see what it does. So explain this code to me. All right, so the code you provided is a React component that allows users to create a job posting. It uses Chakra UI, React Next.js, React Markdown, Editor Lite, and then all of these things. Yeah, this is a pretty decent explanation. I really like the way it structures everything in bullet points because I'm too ADHD to read a paragraph. And I feel like ChatGPC often um, does a really great job at explaining code because it has bullet points. It shows you each piece of code and how it works. So it's not quite on ChatGPT level, but it's, it's getting there. And the best part about art is it can access the internet. So we can ask it things like, what are the top programming languages? Languages of 2023 and why. Top ones are JavaScript, Python, Java, C, C++, Go, Kotlin, Rust, Swift, and PHP. Honestly, that's probably correct. Here's a brief overview of each language and it tells you the use cases for each and that's not bad. Now tell me the average salaries. Let's see if it understands what I mean. And this is great because ChatGPT can't do this yet. I mean, it can, but it's not available to the public. ChatGPT does not have internet access. Here's a list of, oh, I wonder what other drafts are for things like this. See, there you go, these are facts. So the other drafts are all kind of the same thing, just the language is different. That's interesting. I don't have access to the plugins yet, but it does support plugins similar to Code Interpreter and ChatGPT plugin. Let's see if we can visualize this data in a graph. Oh, big thing I forgot to mention, voice commands. It's pretty cool that I can just talk to it, no need to type anymore. Wait, what? This is quite funny. Here is an image of a graph. I think Google's a bit confused. That's not a graph. Oh, wait, let's tell it. That's not a graph. That's not a graph. It's just text. I know it does support plugins, but we're going to do a separate video on that because that's a whole thing on its own. Oh, this is so funny. Okay, so this is not how you use plugins, but that's okay. Anyway, um, next big thing, because I've already shown you the voice commands. Let's ask it, how do I show visualizations so it allows you to embed a url the visualization into your text oh so i can copy paste it into google charts but i'm kind of too lazy to do that we're going to do all of this in another video cover plugins and visualizations and all of those other things but this is a pretty good overview right now and it also does translation so we can say translate or if we can literally say it i keep forgetting to use the voice prompts translate all of this into Korean as recently in South Korea, but I still don't know Korean, but let's just see what it does. Not bad. I, th I don't know what that means, but translate this to English. It does seem much shorter than that entire paragraph. So I bet what it translated was simply the text and not any of the interactive chart parts. That does a really poor job. So it did a really poor job of understanding that I wanted to translate the previous message into Korean, not the fact that you're a language model developed by Google AI, blah, blah, blah. So did a poor job with logic and understanding humans in that regard, but pretty good job in translation, probably. I don't know because I don't know Korean. Let's do it. Uh, translate to Romanian. Oh, it doesn't support Romanian yet. Last thing we should do is ask it, tell me 10 reasons why Bard is better than ChatGPT. So here's 10 reasons why I think I'm better than ChatGPT. Oh, is that a diss? Chad, GPT. 
Oh, it's because I... It's because I called it chat GP. <laughs> okay, for a second I thought that, you know, Bard was throwing this is, but I, I had a typo. I swear I meant chat GPT. Anyway, 10 reasons why. Trained on a larger data set of text and code, which gives me more knowledge and abilities, obviously. Able to generate text that's more creative and interesting. I think that one's a little bit debatable. I'm better at answering open-ended questions, even if they're challenging or strange. That's true. So, um, let's test that. Tell me what. Tell me what would happen if ten penguins were to fall off the Eiffel Tower. I don't know. That's the first thing I came up with. Fourthly, able to generate different creative stuff, backed by Google AI, open source. Ooh, Bart is open source. I didn't even realize that. OpenAI is finally launching an open source alternative to ChatGPT. That was kind of the whole point of OpenAI. They were supposed to be open source, but nonetheless, they're finally making an open source version. So it's really cool that Bard is also open source. I didn't know that. Also free to use and available in multiple languages, always improving. Those are pretty good reasons. And now if 10 penguins were to fall off the Eiffel Tower, they would all likely die. The Eiffel Tower is 324 meters tall and the penguins would hit the ground at a speed of over 50 meters per second. This would cause serious injuries and most likely death. Penguins are not built to withstand high speeds or falls. There is a small chance that one or two of the penguins might survive if they fall, if they landed on something soft like a pile of snow. However, this is very unlikely. All right, this is very dark. I don't know why that was the first thing that came to mind. It was just a strange question. And it does a really good job at reasoning, at giving me facts, like straight from the internet, because it has access to the internet. And I'm pretty impressed with its answers. Honestly, this would pass a Google interview with flying colors. Plus 10 points for me, I would 100% switch to Bard now. But anyway, I hope that you guys found this useful. I'm gonna do a live demo between Bard and ChatGPT for the next video. So we're gonna do more in-depth comparisons for a bunch of different things. So stay tuned for that, subscribe if you're interested, turn on bell notifications, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next video.